This video has been sponsored by Storyblocks. Link in the description. Something that's always surprised me in the editing space on YouTube is that after really thinking that I've tried every software available, one more shows up. And a small army of editors will be claiming that this is the best software in the whole world. This is the best. And in the spirit of this channel, I want to find that software that surprises me. One that has unique features, that's smooth to use, well optimized. One that is free, but has the ability to push out videos like I would on Premiere Pro. And today, a software that has the genuine potential to meet my goals has surfaced. A software that is not only free, but is also highly regarded within the VFX community. A software that has a rather large and constantly growing army behind it. I am, of course, talking about Blender. That's right, Blender, the hugely popular and incredibly fast growing 3D modeling software that was recently used to make the Oscar winning animated film Flow. Now, I do have some previous experience with Blender when I made this video about mm. Well, when I made this over four years ago, I only used Blender for that one 3D graphic and not to edit the entire video. And genuinely, I thought after uploading it that I had completed Blender. I even had a comment from the Blender Guru, otherwise known as the Donut Man. I mean, how much more complete can you get than that? Well, it turns out a lot, as Blender is now being praised for its editing capabilities as well as its 3D workspace. Oh, and did I mention that it's free? To really put this software through its paces, I'm creating a short comedy sketch, one that will involve creating a 3D object in a scene, lots of cutting around dialogue, subtitles, zooms, animations, and masking. You got that, Blender? But right before we start, I want to tell you a quick story. Once upon a time, there was a Finn who loved to edit so much. He loved editing so much that he- It's me, baby! Uh, oh, it's been Finn! Whoa! Whoa, whoa, whoa! How did, how did you get in here? Oh, what is this? Oh, what is this? Oh, Finn, what is this? Oh, what the hell is this? Oh, you call this a story? Oh, 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 story blocks. Howdy, partner. Pour me a drink because I gotta tell you a story. Blocks. Story blocks is a library of authentic stock assets created by real artists. Look at this guy. Are you, hello? Are you, are you awake? Wake up, because I gotta tell you a story! Blocks! It's constantly updated with fresh created content based on the latest trends. Ensuring that you get the assets that you need to tell your story. Blocks! You get thousands of pre-made customizable video templates for all the best softwares, including Premiere Pro, DaVinci, and After Effects. Uh, story? Blocks! And with just one predictable subscription cost, you get unlimited downloads of high quality media, including 4K video, music, and sound effects. So to get started with unlimited stock media downloads for one set price, head to storyblocks.com slash Finza, or head to the link in the description. Story? Now let's get out of here. Suitcase. Zap me up. Well, that was an interesting story. Blocks. Uh, anyway, let's get on with the Blender video. So I've already pre-installed Blender on this device right here. This device being my lovely PC. Now Ulysses as you guys may or may not know, is a nuclear oven and uh, should be very capable of running Blender to its max capacity, whether that's 3D stuff, 2D stuff, editing stuff, or everything stuff. So it should be fine. When opening Blender, you get given the option to pick from a whole bunch of workspace templates. And lucky for little old me, there's a video editing template that I can use. This sets up Blender with a project window, a preview window, and a timeline. Three very basic things needed to edit with. It legit looks like a video editor. Nice one. Immediately as I get in, I'm looking around and getting a feel for it. Almost every single thing here functions differently to Premiere Pro. Like for example, the main way of getting around being the middle mouse button. Oh, scroll wheel does that. This is interesting. Middle click moves stuff around as it does everywhere in Blender. Can we preview these? 
No. Previewing your video and audio files before putting them onto the timeline is a staple of basically every editing software that I've ever used. So to not have that here was pretty disappointing and was something that would come back to haunt me throughout the whole challenge. Another seemingly unchangeable feature on Blender was its lagginess. Oh boy, it's a little bit laggy. I'm running this through my PC, which has a 4090, i914-900KS and 192 gigabytes of RAM. Not to mention, the footage and the software are both on a directly connected internal M.2 drive, which is about as fast as you can get with footage efficiency. This PC really should be a beast with basically any software that I throw at it. But even after messing around with the proxies, I couldn't get this software to run smoothly. What I'm running into here is a lot of chop, and it's building proxies I can see at the bottom here. Now that it's built the proxy, it's a little bit better, but it's a little bit choppy. Next on the list of things that made this next 24 hours mildly infuriating, was the lack of control when it comes to your workspace. And what I mean by that is this line here on the top of the timeline. This might be something I'm just gonna have to go online and, and look at. There's no like intuitive handles to grab here. It was a pretty simple fix. All I needed to do was change the unit down here in the bottom right, which for Blender users in general is second nature. But for me, editing a full length video was not obvious at all. I literally had to watch a tutorial just to find it. And then let's increase the end frame. And honestly, this just doesn't really work for video editing. It's definitely a feature made for making single shot compositions or short 3D scenes. Shout out Ryan King. Thanks bro. I filmed the video to be a small comedy sketch with one two shot, which would be masked to have two me's in it. Two singles to then add some zooms to, and then various shots of the 3D element and space which I'm reacting to. The first thing I wanted to take down almost immediately was that two shot, which required a mask between the two fins standing there. We filmed this without moving the camera so that it could be an easy masking job. We just got further than flame, baby. However, in typical video making fashion, not everything goes to plan. As when I made this mask, which by itself took a worrying amount of time to actually do, it had a color difference between the two shots. That's so strange. It just looks like the colors are just different in the video. That is like more green here. I guess that's the shadow maybe. Now this was just because of a lighting change, AKA a cloud mindlessly floated in front of the sun midway through filming. However, I did manage to get it to look relatively normal after some feathering and shaping of the mask. There are some things I do quite like about it. I've made a mask, but it's proven a bit tricky, but I think that's because of us filming rather than Blender. It's pretty weird doing something that's usually so simple in such a convoluted way like this. As on Premiere, all you have to do is hit one of these mask options and then update that in real time on the preview window. Having to update this manually in Blender after every single adjustment really puts into perspective how useful those shorter and more efficient ways of doing things actually are. But once I had that mask down, I could complete cutting each of the two shot segments. Then I could add those singles in on top and really focus on the snappy dialogue and fast paced cutting that I love doing so much. Is that a blob? Yes, yeah, so, yeah, so it's a- That's a blob! It's a blob. That's a blob and it's changing shit. Oh, it's changed. Whoa! Loose edit is looking pretty good. I'm just whittling it down into the bare bones story. Now this is really where that navigation in Blender shines. Using that middle mouse button to scroll through, zoom in and zoom out is just a delight. If it wasn't such a laggy software, I'd seriously be fangirling over Blender in a much bigger way. Doing the general rough cut, AKA putting all of the clips down onto the timeline and making a story out of them, took a little bit longer than I would have liked, mainly for the reasons that I've mentioned before. So I finished the rough cut. I am genuinely quite surprised at how it feels quite nice and intuitive to actually drag and move around the clips on the timeline. I'll give that to you, Blender. I think that you do a good job with all that stuff. But, however, there is a lot of lagging going on and that's not very fun, especially when I'm editing something that's quite like fast paced with the dialogue. I'm enjoying that I can unlink clips and then move one clip on top of another clip. It's super hands off. Everything's just like, oh, you put the clip there, that's where the clip goes. It's not like, hmm, audio doesn't belong there, don't put that there. It's like, just do whatever you want. Put your audio up, up on the top, I don't care. That's what Blender's like. I wish that it had a preview window for some of the uh, the files so that I could watch them do the in to out point and then drag and drop. I mean, that's that feels like quite a basic thing to want. I feel like every free software I've tried has that, but not this one. Next up, I'm gonna be adding zooms, sound effects, music, and I'm even gonna try a bit of green screening. <laughs> I hope that goes well. Ah! But first I'm real hungry and well, I can't eat food from this blender, but I can from this one. <laughs> Right, it's the next day, and we're gonna start the day with a... Ah, I got him, got him again. Let's turn this nuclear oven back on. Let's get cooking. So back in the editor's chair, I was feeling excited. 
maybe a little too excited? So, keyframes. Anyways, it was time to tackle what we all fear most, keyframes. <laughs> And let me tell you, as someone who has tried many, many softwares with many, many different keyframes, it's always a daunting task getting to grips with a new keyframing system. This is confusing as sh**. Immediately, it's worth saying that Blender doesn't exactly break any rules with its keyframing. It's reminiscent of early DaVinci Resolve and also has a bit of After Effects in it. And what I mean by that for you non-editors watching this is that it's finicky as hell. Don't look at me. Don't look at me. So I start using the keyframes by making zooms for these shots. And I'm quite surprised with some of the cool features on show. I really like that the cursor here will keep going and going and going for as long as you move the mouse. And instead of going off screen, it loops around. Now that is a seriously genius play by the guys over at Blender. That's a cool feature, I like that. Without shift, you can move it pretty fast. But if you hold down shift, it slows it right down. Like it goes fast and then shift slow. And I know I sound like a nerd, but please, Adobe, Bring this into your softwares and lower your price. I'm still not a fan of how laggy it is. And like I mentioned in the beginning of this video, this PC is a nuclear oven. I can run GTA 6 on max settings with this thing. I know I can because I've done it. This is lagging though, and I don't know why. A really annoying part about the more advanced editing in Blender is that the bigger your timeline, the harder it is to focus in on an individual element or a clip. It's just a bit like annoying in that sense. There's a better way to do that in my opinion. See, the good thing about Premiere and DaVinci is that when you have a clip on the timeline, you can just click on it, then you'll have a separate window come up, which will allow you to scroll through that individual clip, essentially acting like its own little timeline, basically giving you a whole lot more control over what goes on inside those individual clips. Like this zoom that I'm doing on Blender, it'd be a whole lot easier easier if I could see this clip in a window on its own. But no, it's got to be all done on the timeline with everything else around it. Like I said earlier, this software is made for those smaller compositions and individual clips. 3D scenes that will be separately exported then slapped together in here. Not fully edited and keyframed to the high heavens like I'm doing right now. Why are you being so extra? Why you do this? And here I was thinking I was a keyframe master. What's happening here is the classic, the classic keyframe problem, everyone has had this issue with every software ever, which is when you change the scale and the position, and then you do a zoom in. The annoying thing about doing that is that when you want to change keyframes, you have to do them with the handles to match the exact same velocity with each one and the same speed. Otherwise, there's going to be a weird crossover, which makes that zoom in do this, right? When you get them both looking the same, the zoom in is gonna have the same velocity at the same time with the position and the scale, and it's gonna be a nice zoom. Great, and it can happen anywhere, up here. Down here. Nice. But that's also why I made my Premiere presets with the handles that are already made so that they match exactly the same speed and velocity. So that when you do a zoom, you can change the position of anywhere it goes and it's gonna match up exactly. That's why we have loads of zooms. You should go check them out on storesart.com, baby. <laughs> That's one zoom. The sound effects were incredibly simple. You drag and drop on a sound effect, hold because there's no in or out function. Then cut it by pressing K for cut, obviously. Well, duh. Then right click, hit fade, and it will fade to or from where your cursor is. Easy, but there are no audio effects here except to change the volume or add a sound equalizer. There's no reverb that I can add. There's like a sound effect that I put in here that I really wanted to have some reverb in, just to add like a little comedic. None of that, no reverb. I also added some music from a PS1 game and the mighty OG, Kevin McLeod. Can we please get a round of applause for this guy? Single-handedly carried YouTube for like 10 years of gaming. I did try green screening with Blender, which once again in Premiere or DaVinci is unbelievably easy. But in Blender, it means deconstructing your clip like Dr. Manhattan from Watchmen. <laughs> there's nodes. <sighs> if anyone has watched this channel like for like more than one second, in a previous video, then you know that I hate nodes. I hate using nodes. And this brings me on to nodes, my worst enemy. Once again, I attempted to make peace with the node gods. And after following a very in-depth tutorial on how to do that, <laughs> What's going on? I managed to get this, which is pretty good, right? Well, it's an urban legend that never happened. 
happened. Because for some reason, I couldn't have that clip on the timeline with the green screen on it. And I think it's something to do with that annoying workspace bar that I pointed to earlier, which wasn't the same size as the green screen clip because everything has to be worked on as a whole on the timeline. Green screening in that clip was basically impossible, or at least really, 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 really hard to get my head around. I don't even care. Good day. What did he put in? So I gave up and I decided to do the special effects stuff afterwards in 3D, what the software was intended for. But after spending almost a whole week trying to do that and learn 3D all over again, I decided just to use After Effects, Photoshop and Premiere instead. And yes, it means that I didn't use Blender for the 3D stuff, but that doesn't really matter because that's not the point of this video. Anyway. If you know how I feel, why would you say that? Like you put me in such an uncomfortable situation, like you know- Overall, pretty happy with it. I think that it cuts well. I think Blender cuts well. If it wasn't so laggy, I would recommend it. But because it's so laggy, I can't recommend it. I can't imagine, unless you're really messing around with the proxies and you're just working with such low quality files in the viewfinder that you ju just don't. Just use another software and then do the 3D stuff in Blender, I guess. Why would you say that? It's things like that that make me not want to recommend softwares. Laggy playback that are just uncontrollably laggy and just make you frustrated uh, when you try and fix it and you just can't find that fix. Also, there's a lot of small things in here which could do with implementing, like previewing a file before putting it on the timeline. Huge. I, you don't realize how huge that is until you don't have it. Just a simple thing like using an in and out function. If it's on there, I haven't found it and Lord knows I've looked for it. If it's on there, then make it more of a thing uh, because I couldn't find it. I'll give the editing software a five out of 10. It's right in the middle. I, it's cool. I like being able to scroll with the middle mouse. I never used that in Premiere. So it's kind of cool to use it here and it felt kind of intuitive. It's a hard recommend, but I guess if you're doing 3D stuff anyway and you just absolutely love Blender and you're just a diehard fan that's not gonna listen to anything I'm gonna say, then carry on using it. I'm not gonna stop you there. I'm also uploading a blank version of this video with no 3D VFX in there. So if you fancy it, give it a go and then leave a link to your version in the comments below. I'd love to see. Now, roll the clip. Hey. Hey, man. What is that? Uh, yeah. No, that's just- What the hell is that? Is that a blob? Yes, yeah, so, yeah, so it's a- That's a blob! It's a blob. That's a blob and it's changing shape. Oh, it's changed. Whoa! It just changed shape. What's going on? Oh, man, you, you should have been here like a minute ago. It was, it was a really detailed sculpture of a, uh, of a donut and it had like these really nice little sprinkles on it and it was just so perfect. Hey, you may, maybe you should go touch it. Oh, I'll go touch it. I think that's a good idea. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. You should go touch it. What's the worst that could happen? Yeah, see, you're good. You're, good. you're great. <laughs> Howdy, partner. Hey. What in donation is that? Yeah, um. You should go touch it. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. What are you still doing here? What the hell? It's good time to run. I need some personal space now. You can get out of here. Yeah, yeah, he said it, he said it. Got loads of exciting videos coming up soon. You're gonna love them. Get the hell out of here.